to this as well, you know, being able to connect in ways that we never really were able to connect before. And um, we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to, to listen and be a part of our demo. We're really, really excited about the opportunity to, to share our OITMS, Ohio Incident Tracking and Monitoring System. Uh, some of you that I, I know there's some folks on here like me that have been around for a little while and you know we've had the same system since 1999, obviously, with updates and changes based on your guys' recommendations. So um, we are really, really excited to switch to a new platform. Uh, the old platform we had was really good. It, it served us well, uh, but we're getting to the point where we were trying to add more things. And each time we tried to add things, we would break, something else would break. And people said, you know, it's time to, to go ahead and move on. And Salesforce seems to be the, the way of the world and the way of the future. And so it's really excited. It's, it's got some opportunity in terms of significant upsides when we want to make changes, new versions, updates. So we're excited about it. That's the good news. The bad news is it's Salesforce and none of us, at least none of us at the department are real familiar. Uh, maybe some of you are that have done work elsewhere and, and, and done some, but I think we're going to be growing together. We're going to be learning together. We're going to be kind of busting this thing out collaboratively and um, I'm very excited about that. But th there are some We've been so thankful to get some feedback from you guys over time, you know, over the time we've utilized the, the, the current legacy ITS system. And we collected that information. We saved that information. We've been utilizing that information as we work with contractors to try to make sure that we bring forward some of the things that you guys have told us are important to you. And we're excited about some of those those things. And Ted's going to kind of give us a walkthrough of the whole system. But, you know, just for, for those of you that have, have provided some information to just some quick updates, you know, with the, with the Salesforce system, we're going to be able to have a dashboard. When you go in, there'll be a nice dashboard that kind of shows you the work that you have. You know, how you can kind of organize your work for the day. What's important? What are the priorities? You guys mentioned that that would be really nice to have. And we got a nice dashboard that's there for you. There's an opportunity to create within Salesforce your own reports for your own MUIs and the, and the information that you're looking at so that you can kind of slice and dice the data on your own the way that you'd like to do that. And that's exciting. And we're learning more and more about that so it's really important that we have that as well and then one of the things i know for investigative agents that you've talked about for a long time is having the ability to kind of upload evidence into the actual report so yeah. photos witness statements um, all those kinds of things that are really important to the investigation be able to to have those and, and upload those files and be able to show us a little bit about how we do that as we go through the system but um just an exciting time for us it's uh it's going to be something that's going to be really really good um, obviously, it's going to we're going to go through growing pains like you do with any brand new system. But we know working with you guys and, and getting the feedback from you and and being able to make adjustments, changes as we need to, um, we're going to have a really really good product. And and there's a lot of uh, folks that I've spoken with throughout the the nation that are interested in us and the system that we're building and what we're providing. So it's kind of exciting. We, we're gonna we're gonna make it um, something that's going to be more efficient, more effective, hopefully for everybody that uses it. And then we're going to remember that we can continue to improve it down the road in a, in a way that we've not been able to do so with the current legacy ITS system. And I think those are the things that make it so exciting. And, and again, so thankful that you guys are here. I know it's Friday. I know there's a ton of work out there. And so we appreciate you giving up a little bit of your time for us. And uh, Ted, I think I'll turn it over to you and, and let you get started with the presentation. But thank you guys so much and certainly look forward to your feedback. today. OK, well, that that, that was like it's always a very. Uh... Very fun following such a, a grand opening like that. But I'm curious, we have about, let's see, about 30, 40 people. How many people, and you can use that thumbs up to test it out, how many people have a cat on their lap right now? I'm curious. Any thumbs up? I usually get somebody that holds their cat right up to the screen and says, here's my cat right there. So anyway, I don't know. Anyway, so. Uh, what we're going to do, and, and this is pretty late back class, if you guys have any kind of questions, um, you can go ahead and raise your hand or you can just turn on your mic and blurt it out and interrupt me. I'm fine with that. And uh, uh, so what we're going to be doing is kind of going over the external uh, way of entering a new MUI and we'll show you the uh, the, pla the uh, portal of the uh, Ohio ITMS system. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, by the way, um, the notes I create so that I, I don't forget to tell you at the beginning is that um, this isn't the only time that you're going to get this. And I, it, this is more of a demo and as well as a training because it kind of walks you through the entire process. But there is a video. And by the way, we've made it public now. So it's on the um, 
YouTube, the DODD YouTube page, and the video is, is hanging out there. And I will be, uh, so I'm in a test environment, so you won't see everything that I'm talking about that you will see. But I do have a PDF as well that I'd like to show you as well uh, on how to kind of log into this. So let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Oh, did I miss something else? Okay, yeah. Uh, also, um, what you're going to be seeing is going to be a way to enter MUIs uh, as an investigative agent. But what I understand is that there's providers, county boards, and D.C. departments that will have different roles that um, will have a different role or a different view. So just keep that in mind as we uh, kind of go through the whole process. So anyway, let me go ahead and do that uh, sharing screen thing. And then after I share your screen, I'll ask everybody, can you see my screen? And somebody will say, yes, I can. And and uh, that'll kind of make things a whole lot easier. And I'll bring you guys back up. All right, so can you share to see my screen over here? Yeah, ah, there you go. Thanks, Heather. Heather's the thumbs up then. All right, so... <clears throat> What I've pulled up is a PDF that you will also have access to on how to go ahead and navigate this portal. And um, the way that we will be logging in, since I'm already logged in in the background, I will show you that you would log in to going to your dodd.ohio.gov. And uh, from there, you'll use your OHID login um, by clicking a little silhouette dude there and um, putting in your login and your password. And that will bring you up to your uh, your OHID screen. Now. There is a, uh, there's going to be a, a um, oh, what do we call it? The tiles, the Salesforce tile that will show up here. And uh, by the way, head nods are good. If this makes sense, you can kind of head nod. I can see some of your, here. there you go. Thanks. Uh, Janelle, is it Janelle? Yeah, there you go. Janelle's like, I did not want to be called out in front of 40 people, but <laughs> that's okay. Janelle, all you guys that have your cameras on, I will look for you for positive encouragement. Otherwise, the entire audience is just a little dot of a, uh, of a camera on my screen there. So anyway. <clears throat> Once we have logged into the system, we'll get something, we'll probably be on what's called what uh, what we call the home tab. Now, by the way, let me go back to that PDF because uh, my home tab is a very simplistic looking home tab. But what Scott was referring to uh, with regards to the dashboard is that um, you should have something very uh, coming up soon that would look very much like a nice little dashboard with some graphs and uh, and you can have a donut chart and kind of all the groovy things in there that kind of shows you what's going on in your MUI land uh, in your area. So far, so good. And by the way, that's my catchphrase, so I will say that probably 10, 15 times in the next hour. So anyway, let me go ahead and uh, <clears throat> talk about the uh, MUI that we're going to be putting in here. So I've created an MUI, and uh, by the way, it's the same MUI that you'll be seeing in the video if you watch that video tonight. It's Friday night, so you probably want to kind of get comfortable and watch MUI videos the rest of the night. I, I think it'll be great. Anyway, so um, where am I at? There we go. So I went ahead and uh, filled that little form on uh, an individual named Homer Odyssey. So the problem that, that we had, the MUI that we had with Homer, is that... Um, uh, Roger went ahead and set up a, a movie event and uh, Homer was going to go to the movies. Now, um, uh, Roger shows up and uh, says it's time to go to the home to the movies. Homer doesn't want to go to the movies. And uh, Roger says, well, we've already paid for the tickets so you kind of need to go. And Homer doesn't like that and uh, uh, bangs his head against the wall in anger of not wanting to go to the movies. Of course, the uh, uh, and by the way, that uh, that event kind of gave Homer a little red mark on his forehead. and. Um, what we did is we basically said, okay, you don't have to go to the movies, and this alleviated the issue right off the bat. So let's go ahead and show you how to put that into a uh, MUI externally. So far, so good. I'm going to go to do a cough. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Everybody's like, he's coughing in my ear and all that kind of stuff. All right, so. So once we're in there, uh, like I said, you'd probably be on the home tab and you'll have some form of a graph. Keep in mind that I'm in a training uh, system and that way when I train, we don't see any kind of personal information. It's all fake made up uh, training information. So we will talk about this MUI tab, the schedule of the abuser registry. But what I really want to get into right off the bat is how do we enter a new MUI? All right. And. Uh, there's a new MUI button right up there to go ahead and click on. So we'll click on new MUI. I will kind of go through this little little uh, uh, wizard is what it is. So once we're in this new MUI, if you look over here on the right hand side, it pretty much is going to walk you through the entire process of entering an MUI. Now, by the way, there are things in this process that aren't 
always part of an MUI. So you'll see that uh, of all these things, there's no uh, place to enter a witness because you might not always have a witness in an MUI. I'll show you how to enter those after we've just gone through the uh, last step. So uh, another cool thing that I want to kind of show you is, first of all, let's go ahead and say that the uh, county, now, as I'm, as I'm going through all these things, you see that there are some red asterisks. If there's a red asterisk, this is a required field. But if there is no asterisk, you could leave this uh, blank for time being. We understand that MUIs take uh, uh, don't happen overnight. And if you need to come back to fill out more information later, it's quite easy to do. So, But you won't be able to go forward unless you fill out at least the ones with red asterisks. So um, right off the bat, let's say that this one happened in my county of Summit County. Now, what I'm also going to show you is a uh, kind of nifty little check and balance. So if there's a discovery date, <clears throat> this discover date cannot happen before the actual MUI. It's kind of future telling and it doesn't kind of work that way. So let me go ahead and explain to you. Let's go ahead and say that the discovery date was on the 24th, but I'm going to say that the incident date well, that would have been wrong. Okay, let me do this one. Discovery date was on the 23rd. Let's say that the incident date was on the 24th. When I try to continue, I will get an error, and that's kind of cool to know. So, um, by the way, the provider, let's say that the provider discovered it on the 24th as well. And we're going to go in and fill out the rest of this. Uh, other entities involved. There were no other entities involved. And the county location. Now, by the way, you can have somebody registered in one county while an MUI happens in another county. In this case, I'm going to say that it happened in the same county that Homer uh, resides in. So, uh, elemental P, Q, R, S. Let me go to Summit. And the area that this happened was at the residence. And the residence was a non-county operated program. The area of that residence was the family home. And the room that it happened in happened to be Homer's bedroom. So far, so good. Now, when I try to go ahead and hit next, it doesn't take me to the next. In fact, when I scroll up here, we see that we've got a little error showing us that the discovery date can't be before the actual incident date. And that totally makes sense. So let's go ahead and fix that. So uh, the incident date, uh, discovery date, let's make all the dates pretty much about the same thing, uh, same time. Everybody kind of got um, notified at the same time. Now, when I click on next, you'll see that I am in the uh, initial allegations. Now the next portion of this MUI. So the initial allegations are basically what happened. And by the way, you have a lot of space that you can go ahead and write uh, exactly whatever the story was. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick paste and boom, there's my uh, event that happened. So far, so good. All right. So let me go and click next. And now what are the immediate actions that took place after this uh, event occurred? So I have another set of typing. Look how fast and accurate I can type. There you go. By the way, we also have another um, uh, the, uh, another scroll down. We can kind of fill this with as much data as we need. And we'll click on next. <clears throat> so as you can see, we're still going through and it's showing you what you've done and what you haven't done yet. So we're adding the individual. Now the individual's name happened to be Homer Odyssey. And what I can do is I can even just click and uh, type an H and an O to uh, do a search for that individual. And Homer shows up because Homer's in the system. And, and I'm going to go ahead and select Homer because this is the person that is in the MUI. Now, what I want to show you is that when I click Next, all of Homer's data will show up. And it's going to be in a gray area. We can't change this because Homer is already in there. But the cool thing is, is that if Homer was not in the system, you would be able to go ahead and add a person to this. And uh, these would all be blank for you to fill out. Does that make sense? Uh, you thought I was going to say so far, so good. All right, so let me go ahead and click on Save Individual. And by the way, as we're going through this process, there will be some save buttons. And those are pretty important because as we click Save, the MUI is con constantly being uh, updated. So kind of remember that if there's a save, we'll click on Save and we'll continue. By the way, action is completed and the action Save Individual has been completed. So I'll go ahead and keep finishing. So if we needed to add another individual, I understand MUIs can have multiple individuals that uh, that are involved. In this case, there are no uh, other individuals. We'll keep this, this one quite simple. And we'll go ahead and click Next. So <clears throat> they want us to go ahead and click and select the individual. Of course, since Homer is in there, Homer shows up in the dropdown. And 
I'll click next. And that way I can go ahead and assign uh, and uh, list Homer's uh, provider. And Homer's provider was a residential provider. And I know that the type was, I think I made him a certified provider. So if I'm gonna search for something, let's say that I know that the provider started with an A, and I'll go ahead and click on search providers. I'll bet you I'll get a pretty good list here. And I remember as I'm scrolling down that there's Homer's, uh, uh, into, uh, there's Homer's uh, provider. By the way, does anybody know who lived on Baker Street or 122B Baker Street? That would be Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Yeah. And Pat's like, yeah, I'm not going to blur it out, but I know it's Sherlock Holmes. All right. Cool. Cool. So we'll click on next. There's a couple Easter eggs in this, I think. So, so it shows us the uh, provider and the individual. This looks right. And I will click on save provider. All right. Now that we've clicked on save, we'll click next to go to the next portion of this. And by the way, check it out. We're about halfway into this MUI already. All right. So as I scroll up, um, are we finished uh, adding providers in this case? Yes, I will go ahead and uh, finish and I'll click next. So the PPI, the primary person of interest in here. So um, by the way, if you notice that there are no red asterisks here. If you didn't know the PPI right off the bat, you can come back and fill this out later. And I will be showing you guys definitely how to come back to an MUI and update it and edit it and fix things. So the um, MUI, the uh, PPI here would be uh, Roger. Last name is Ebert, okay? I don't know his middle name or his surname description. I do know that he was a friend. And um, let's say that his date of birth just happens to be something like one, one, oh, okay, 10, uh, 1960. Oh, look at that, get yeah, that. Uh, did I get that in right? One, one. Oh, we need a zero one right there. There you go. The red little uh, area told me exactly how to fill that out. So um, I also re uh, have learned that we uh, use date of birth as an identifier in our MUIs. So I'll go ahead and put his date of birth as well here. Oh, let me do that as zero one. Uh, you'll see how horrible of a typer I am. And now, there's that save button. So we'll go ahead and click on save PPI. Action is complete and I'll click next. <clears throat> now, by the way, as uh, there can be multiple uh, individuals, there can also be multiple PPIs in an MUI. And if we needed to add another PPI, we would just do this right here by adding an additional PPI. In this case, we'll keep this as simple as possible and it was only one PPI as well as one individual. So I'll click on finish PPI. And we're now on the, uh, now this is a really cool screen because what this screen does is a lot, it basically ties everything together. We'll tie the PPI with the individual and, and uh, the provider. So if I clicked on the down arrow, Homer Odyssey is in there. If I click on this down arrow, there's Acme Outings. And if I click on this one, there's Roger. And when I click next, this kind of ties everything together. And now we have the MUI category, okay? So the MUI category that will, put in here, and these probably look very familiar to you, this one would be a rights code violation that I'll I'll put in here. So we click on rights code violation and I click on next. How are we doing over there? Head nods are good, maybe? Any questions yet? Nope, awesome. So what kind of injuries? Well, I did mention that Homer uh, received a little red mark on his forehead. So let's go ahead and add that injury. Now. We will also be able to add um, evidence in the form of pictures and files a little bit later. But right here, we're just going to kind of fill out what that injury happened to be. So who received the injury? Now, be, uh, as I click on this, we'll have a drop down arrow of Homer Odyssey. Remember, if there were multiple uh, individuals, there would be two people that you could choose from to add injuries individually. Individuals that you can add individually, individuals. Yeah, that made sense, right? All right. So. We'll click on Homer Odyssey. The severity of that was a very minor, um, minor uh, severity. The cause of injury would be pretty much Homer's behavior that he banged his head against the wall. And the result happened to be basically a little red mark. And there's your red mark. And where was that red mark? The location, I'll scroll down to find that was right on his forehead. I'll click on save for this injury. And by the way, there can be multiple injuries involved. So if you had to add another one, the add injury button, add injury button right there. But this was the only thing that happens. We'll click on next. 
All right. Are there any more investigation categories? There could be more than just a rights code violation. So if we needed to add another uh, another uh, uh, category, we can do that here. In this case, it was just the rights code violation. I'll click on next to go to the next area. But by the way, as we're scrolling through, we're almost done with the initial wizard of, of entering this MUI. OK, so. We have to have some form of a notification, and the reason is we see that little asterisk right there. And if you click on that bell, we can uh, talk about the first notification. I think we went ahead and notified the county board, and we notified the county board pretty much as soon as that happened. I'll click on save, and now we have at least one notification. Now, we probably notified somebody else, and I'll click on the plus to go ahead and state that we notified the guardian at about the same time of that uh, of that event. So. I'll click on save and now we can see that we've got two notifications in here. So far, so good. Oh, head nods, thanks. All right, so if I click on next. So I don't have any investigative agents in my uh, in my uh, the training area, but if you had investigate, when you have investigative agents, you'll be able to put in the investi investigative agent as well as the backup agent. So we'll, we would fill those two out. We'll click on save assignment. And then we'll click next. And now what's happening is that it's pretty much putting this MUI together. And in a second, we'll see the actual MUI showing up on our screen just like this. So far, so good. All right. And what is this? This is really the MUI. And this is where you will come back to if you need to update or edit this or fix or fix an error in this MUI. So as I'm scrolling down, by the way, we're going to hit this evidence button really soon here in a second. But as we're scrolling down, and by the way, since I'm in a training environment, you might not be seeing the MUI ID number here, but there would be an actual, the standard MUI ID number. I think that's, um, uh, it, it's date and year, and it's either year or date, date and year. It's something very, very, uh, you guys all know what it looks like, so it's the you standard it, normal. Yeah, one of it, those you things. Got calendar year, you got the so county, close. and then you got the number. There you go. You had <laughs> it. You had I'm it. I'm so close to knowing what I'm talking about here, guys. It's <laughs> awesome. It is Friday. All right, so as we're scrolling down, we can see, all right, there's the dates, there's everything. Basically, this is everything that you guys put into the MUI. And if I click on the down arrow here, I can kind of see the initial allegations, the immediate actions. I can click on individuals. There's Homer. Well, what about Homer? There's all about Homer right here. And as I keep scrolling down, there's the providers that we, uh, that we put in. By the way, did you need to add another provider later? We can always do that. Then this is basically where we're coming to, to hit all this. And in fact, you know what? Let me get out of this for a second. Let me go back to this MUI button. So this MUI button is going to be where all of your MUIs are hanging out at. And we have a drop down arrow here where we can kind of pick uh, pre made lists. You can also make your own list. I've created one called All My Stuff. Now, my, my stuff will probably also include things that you may not see. Once again, I'm in the training area. But right here, and by the way, I told you that there would be a regular name for this. My uh, Mine didn't give me a regular name. Yours will, the date, the, the year, and all of those uh, associated. So check this out. Let's click on this uh, MUI that we just created, and you'll see that we're back to where I was just uh, showing you. So far, so good? Some head nods? Kind of? All right, good. <laughs> Pat's like, I'm hey, I'm the head nod person of, of this whole thing. Pat, by the way, when you head nod, that means 40 other people, I, I will assume, have understood what you're doing. So that's uh, that's good. So as we're scrolling down here, let me go ahead and uh, continue. We talked about, um, we saw the individuals, providers. We saw the PPIs. There's Roger Ebert. Now, by the way, guardians. We didn't see guardians in there because there might not be guardians that need to be listed. But if we needed to add a guardian, we can click on the drop down arrow and just add a guardian to this uh, MUI. So the guardian, let's see who was uh, Homer's guardian. That would be how about Mr. Jim. Hmm. The Morrison is the only name I can think of. The guardian type would have been an individual. And you know what? I don't know exactly where he lived, but we will click on save guardian because I can go ahead and add this and fill this out later if I have to. We'll click on save guardian information. And then I'll click next to get out of that. And now let's check out to see if Guardian has just been filled out. And there's the Guardian. So this is how you're updating an MUI. All right. Uh, investigation categories. I can see the uh, injuries. 
And if we wanted to add a prevention plan, we can add prevention plans right here. So all I'm really doing is scrolling down and filling out stuff that I still need to fill out. Make sense? All right, so um, let's go ahead and add a prevention plan while we're here. So if I click on add prevention plan, at the moment, there are no prevention plans. I'll click on the big old plus to go ahead and add a prevention plan. And we can go ahead and fill out just a few uh, fields. This one, um, this prevention plan, it was a change in routine for the cause or contributing factor. Um, what is the strategy? How about a little bit of counseling? And the re uh, responsible, who's responsible for implementation? That would be Roger here. And the time frame for that implementation, let's make that quite soon. And if this is verified, if these are verified that they have occurred and you verified it, we can click on the verified button right there. I'll hit save. And now I see that I have a prevention plan in here. When I click next and close out of that, let me go ahead and show it up. By the way, I've just put in that prevention plan and it kind of looks like there it is. So far so good? Actually, no, let me go ahead and refresh. Now I should see that prevention plan. And coming down here, investigation categories, prevention plan, and there it is now. So far, so good? All right, so let's move right along. Oh, by the way, if, if Homer had to be taken to the hospital, there would have been a COVID-19 test. So if we click on the down arrow by COVID-19, at the moment there's no data filled in here. And I'll just show you where we would go to fill that stuff out. You would have the individual, that would be Homer, The uh, when the test was, what the test results, were they vaccinated? If I click on yes, you'll see that by clicking on yes, other things show up to fill out. Makes total sense. Now that we said yes, we have to fill out what the date the vaccination was, uh, the vaccination two, what were the types of vaccinations? Did they receive their booster and all, and what were the test results? So all this stuff could be placed in um, either during your MUI or, or right after your MUI, uh, you, basically or after you've entered it and came back to edit it. Let me go ahead and click outside of that and we'll leave that one blank. Now, by the way, let's talk about the evidence, all right? So as I scroll right back up to the top, there's a big old evidence button here. And what we can do is that when I click on evidence, you'll get uh, a nice little window. Now we can upload files and you can go ahead and click on upload files and it'll ask, where do you wanna get the files from? What directory it is? Or we've got to drop files here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring up my uh, evidence folder and we can go ahead and basically there's the bruise that Homer received. So all I really need to do is drag that from the window here, right over top of drop files. And you'll see that it just uploaded the bruise. We'll click on done. And what's also kind of cool about this is that I've understood that a lot of MUIs can have multiple files uh, involved. So if you give your file a, a title, maybe a description, this is the bruise. Did I, no, of course I didn't spell that right. I would be surprised if I can spell three words, B-R-U-I-A. There you go, without uh, looking at my hands. By the way, I, I, I know I have to look at my hands to type, but sometimes I find out I'm not looking at my hands to type, and then I realize that because it's working, I don't know what I'm typing, and then I stop. So I have, I have no idea what that means. By the way, so the categories, uh, let's say this is an internal category, and this happens to be a form, okay? When I click on publish, you're gonna see that that, uh, that a file basically hangs out there. Now, by the way, if you wanted to add multiple files at once, we can go ahead and just highlight a bunch of them and throw all of those over here. And you'll see that one after another, they all kind of get thrown in. And what you can do then is after we click done, we would have to fill out the descriptions of, of all those if we want to. Now, by the way, all I'm gonna do is quickly give myself a couple internals and a couple uh, nuns. And, oh, and let's do a couple types of form, facts, and form. Now, when I click on publish, you'll see that there they all inside. Uh, there's all your uh, files inside there. And you can tell what kind of a file it is, a PDF, a Excel spreadsheet, a document, or a, uh, or, or a picture. Now, the reason that it's really kind of cool to go ahead and add these form, these, um, um, uh, fields is that if I now need to go ahead and go through a very long list of of evidence, I can go ahead and filter out all of my forms, 
or I can go ahead and uh, look at all the categories that happen to be internal or um, or internal and general that will show up. If I take all those check marks off, I'll see everything. If we wanted to go ahead and look at the bruise that Homer got, I'll just click on the bruise and boom, there's the little picture of Homer's bruise. How does that feel? Pretty neat. Oh, somebody asked, can we uh, now, by the way, if you uh, needed to edit this so I could look at the file details for that. Um, I can go ahead and see how uh, when I put it in, let me go ahead and uh, we can download that. We can upload new versions if we need to. Um, and let me go ahead and get right back to that MUI. Let me go back to my stuff and I'll show you a little bit more in there. So once again, the evidence button is always hanging out at the top. Uh, what else can we do? So, oh, and if we needed to do it, so uh, when you're in the evidence button, how do we get back to where we were? There's a return to MUI button right over there. Any questions on evidence? Holy, can we upload video and audio yet? Yes, we can. In fact, uh, one of the uh, one of the samples I tested out was uh, some background music, and we were able to uh, to put in an entire. Uh, uh, basically, if you were doing an audio inter interview or or a video interview, you could add those two as well. And uh, that was your question, Valerie. So, I think that the limit of file size is about one gig. I'm not. Uh, don't, don't quote me on that. I know there's at least a gig. I don't know if it's more than a gig. Um, but if we need to know that, I can always get back to you and find out what file size that was. Can you unplug, uh, can you upload recordings and video? Oh, that was it. Can we upload? Oh, there was two people that asked the same questions in a row. Okay. Well, there you go. I knocked both of those questions out with one answer. All right. So what else can we do here? So as we're scrolling down, um, were there any witnesses? Now, you notice that witnesses was not in the uh, in the wizard may not have been witnesses in every MUI. But if there was, of course, we would come right down here to witnesses, add a witness. And the witness happened to be Doug and Richie. Now, I don't know Doug's email or phone when we do find it. He does like to be called at midnight uh, in all different forms of, uh, of, of emails and, and, and what have you. We'll click on save witness record. <clears throat> And when I come down here to witnesses, I should see Doug hanging out there. So far, so good. Good, good, good. Now, we understand that MUIs might take a little bit longer than the standard MUI time to get things in. So if you need to ask for an extension request, we have a place right here for extension requests. So if I click on the down arrow by extension request, I can click on create extension request. And this will have a, just a couple little pieces of a form to fill out. Uh, what's the type? Um, it's an investigation request. And the reason, we have a couple of reasons here we could choose from. Uh, we'll pick other. And the reason was that uh, uh, we need to watch the movie. Question. All right. Uh, what was the last contact uh, with the uh, uh, or record request that would let's say that that last contact was on the 22nd. All right. When I click on finish, that extension request was submitted. And what will happen is that um, uh, the DODD will also get an email asking about that extension request that they can go ahead, either approve or deny and uh, send that right back. So far, so good. There we go. Um, let's see, individuals, providers, PPIs, oh, what am I missing? Oh, so questions. If the DODD has questions regarding this MUI, they can go ahead and ask a question on their end and you will get a question on your end. By the way, you might be asking, well, how will I know? I do believe that you get an email stating that there's a question. Uh, Dustin isn't just saying yes, thanks Dustin. Yes, you will get an email and I'm sure of that now because Dustin re uh, nodded. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, ask a question. So what I'm going to do right now is I, I'm going to I'm going to switch over to an internal view very quickly, just so that we can ask a question and see it pop up over here. Now I would like to kind of mention that this will not be a view that you will see, but the only way that I can ask that question is to go into that view. So if I click over here on the internal, you can get a little sneak preview 
on uh, how a question might be, answer, uh, might be asked. And there is the MUI that I'm going to go ahead and ask a question about. And I'll click on Ask Questions. Did you just see a picture of Einstein water skiing? Because I think I just saw Einstein water skiing. That is the coolest. All right, so let's click on a new question. Now, by the way, uh, you can ask as many questions as you want. Uh, so you can keep questions as simple, because if you need two different answers to different questions, just ask two of them. So this will, we can assign this to a person or it will also be assigned to the MUI. Um, so the question type has, has to be an investigation. And the question was, what was the movie? Mark to the question. All right, I'll click on save. And now let's go back over to that other side back where you will be. And now, by the way, so right now, because I didn't refresh this page, it doesn't look like there's any questions being asked. If I go ahead and click on my refresh button like any other window, I should be able to come now down to questions and see that there was a question asked. As I scroll down, there's questions and there's the for, there's the question that was asked. By the way, another place that you will see that remember that home screen and that I said you will you will have a nice little dashboard. That home screen, if I uh, update that home screen, I don't know if mine will update my open questions, but you would have a, a list of questions over here as well. But you don't see it. This is my training environment that I'm I'm teaching from. So let's go back to that MUI. And my stuff. And let's come down to that question. So we have a question. Do you want to answer it? Let's go ahead and click on answer question. I'll click on answer question. Uh, this is the question that was asked. And if I click on the down arrow, there's the answer question button. And what was the movie? Who was it assigned? It was asked on this date. And the response was, oh, I keep using the same movie. What's a horrible movie other than signs? <laughs> Maybe you guys like signs. I, I'm sorry. Let's put signs again. There you go. All right. I will click on save. You were like, what's he got against signs? He keeps putting signs in there. All right. So we can click on return to MUI, and that question has been answered. And the uh, DODD will also get an email referring to uh, the answer to this question. So what have I missed? Are the investigation categories, prevention plans, we've got injuries, we know uh, how to add evidence, we can come around through here, witnesses and, and questions. All right, great. So let's scroll up to the top. Let's talk about the other buttons that we have up here. By the way, that's how you enter an MUI. And that's also how you go back to an MUI to update it throughout the rest of the MUI process. Any questions so far? Will there be a fax date appear in this application will there be a fax date appearing in this application i don't know i can handle that one that question ah, if you'd like thanks hi um this is connie and i think dustin may have already may be working on a response to throw in the chat as well but um in this application we've decided not to call filing extensions fax dates because you know that's circa 1982 so um, now you would ask for an extension on the filing, just like you would the investigation. So, Ted, if you go down to the request extension fields um, and then create a new extension request, and you see the type there, you have a filing extension or investigation extension. So the filing would be like, hey, um, Ohio ITMS is down, our office is closed for, you know, for a snowstorm. You could write your reason in there and this process will go through your regional manager now. So once you add in your extension request, whether that's for a filing or you need more time because there's a police investigation, once you submit that, that will go to your regional manager for um, review and approval. So hopefully that answered your question, Janelle. All right, and um, if you add a guardian name information into this incident, will that then roll up to add the guardian information into IDS CRM? Good question. 
I can add a guardian inside here, but I don't know how that will affect these other two areas. That will not um, roll up into IDS or CRM. We're really pulling the information from guardian and provider and other aspects from the records of truth. Um, and honestly, um, down the road, what we hope to have is where the guardian information is stored. We hope that if that individual that you select has a guardian, that it will auto populate into our application. Um, but that's a great question, um, but that's probably an enhancement that's down the road. But you can add that information um, because we'll show you some ways in which you can do some um, written summaries and also uh, PPI letters using the data that you've entered into the system. But that's probably for a different day. Okay. Uh, we do have one more question or one more. Uh, uh, they did not. Yes. Before we go to the next question, I just wanted to add to Connie's thing. Right now, IDS is the system of truth for the guardian information and the individual demographic information, but there is a plan to move that into Salesforce. So the Ohio ISP and other applications, hopefully all of that information will communicate down the road. It's just right now, it does not feed up to IDS. Okay. And uh, now this is interesting. Dustin's name is poor uh, comma Dustin, but uh, Nelson Santos has Nelson. I don't know who's first and last name, but um, you didn't understand quite about the witnesses. Let me just show you how to add another witness. Let's say that there was a multiple witnesses. So down here by this little witness area, I'm going to click on that. And we just click on add witness. And as I click on add witness, there could be another witness. This guy happened to be um, uh, Jimmy. And his last name, Hendrix. Uh, we put an email. If we had any kind of an email, phone, let's see, 330-867-530. Uh, Nayain, right? Okay. So anyway, um, we fill all this stuff out. Uh, whatever we, we know, we can go ahead and, in fact, uh, address information, where they all live. Click on Save Witness Record. And that's really how you would add a witness in there. In fact, if I scroll back down, I should be able to now to see there are multiple witnesses involved in this MUI. Did that help? My question, yes. Yes, my question is directly, is, is it doing the intake process and you go to no. actions and save and then add the witness or is it? No, it's after the wizard because there might not always be witnesses. So uh, they didn't include that in the, wit in the wizard because uh, they, they wanted to include things that are mostly always going to be mostly always. That's what I tell my wife. It's mostly always going to happen. So um, after you've gone ahead and done the last portion of that wizard, this is where we add our witnesses in. How does that feel? Okay, Roger. So so you add the initial information in, in the intake, which is the wizard. Yes. And then once that's saved, then you go in and add the witness if you're ready. Exactly. Off. This is the screen Roger that, that will add the witnesses. All right. Awesome. All right. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, touch base on the scheduled leave. So scheduled leave basically is a very uh, simple area that um, uh, if there's an investigative agent going on vacation, somebody else needs to go ahead and cover for that investigative agent. And in, and for us to go ahead and know who's who's basically minding the store, we'll click on new. And this is where you would fill out, somebody would fill out, or you can fill out um, uh, the start date of this scheduled leave. Let's say it's today, the end date uh, is on the first, uh, status is open. Um, I may be putting this in for two other people, the uh, investigative agent and the one that's being covered by. So we can say, who's it covered by and who's it covering for? Um, at the moment, I don't have anybody I can put in because I don't know anybody who's an investigative agent right now. We would click on, <coughs> sorry, we would click on save, and you would have now the ability to see who is um, the investigative agent of that moment. Um, and that's pretty much all scheduled leave has has to offer there. Let's click on abuser registry. So if you are, if you need to do a search for somebody who may be on the abuser registry, this would be the button that you'd click on to get there. So if I'm looking for all of the Rogers, and I know I had put Roger on earlier, so, oh, not Roger. Yeah, Rogers. No, Roger. Or 
and I click on search, I should see that there is Roger Ebert that was put on the registry so we can go ahead and verify whether or not there is a person in there. And it's a very simple process here, so there's not much to this uh, abuser registry. All right, and uh, so we know new and new MUIs. Downloads gives you two web pages that are on the DODD site. If I click on toolkit, this will take you to, did I click on toolkit? I think I did, let me, uh, there we go. And that'll take you to the health and welfare toolkit, which will bring up some stuff that you can probably use. And if I go back to that, uh, to that MUI and I click on the other portion of that uh, downloads, investigative agent resources will bring up the other web page that you can use. Two nice little places to kind of, basically it's everything you need at a click. So far so good. Okay. And the last thing that I want to point out is search, your search area. So I understand that an investigative agent may need to know what's going on in a couple other counties. So your login usually gives you your own county stuff and allows you to go ahead and create MUIs in your own area. But if you needed to find out something about an MUI in other counties, I mean, basically, if I wanted to find out um, the category of rights code violations, I can go ahead and uh, select that, click on find MUIs, and we can see all the different places that there was right code, uh, a rights code violation. Hopefully that helps you do your job. How's that feel, Pat? There you go. All right, I got it. that's a real thumbs up, not even a fake virtual one. All right. Um, and, We'll go back to that MUI and I'll leave it right there. Let me go back to my stuff and my MUI. By the way, like I said, you see that the number of that MUI is not the number that you will get. Um, once again, I'm in a training environment. You will have a much more accurate uh, MUI name. So this is a great question. I do not have a definite answer this one today, but oh, I'm sorry, I was reading. Somebody else. Oh, Justin, I was reading your your uh, reply. And let me let me take care of that a yeah. little bit because there was a couple of questions about COVID nineteen information, and so okay, um, you guys all know obviously over the last two years that's become an incredibly important thing and in information that that we're trying to to have an understanding of. So that that will be asked only for the categories of information, you know, unanticipated hospitalization or maybe potentially a death, where that information would be um, important to put in there. Uh, I think it looks like Rebecca maybe asked a really good question about, you know, hey, if we put this in one time, is it going to roll up every time that person comes up or are we going to have to put it back in? And, and we don't know exactly the answer to that uh, as Dustin responded there, but we certainly will check. Um, we may be able to have it roll up, but at the same time, there might be future tests or other things that happen too that might make a difference. So uh, it's a really good question, but uh, I'm not sure that, about the answer to that. We'll check it out and, and certainly keep you posted moving forward with that. Good questions, guys. Uh, looks like we got another question here about search. Mm -hmm. Can you search and see content in past MUIs for people that are not in your county? The only yeah, that way was that an I can tell you. Yeah, uh -huh. that was an enhancement that um, for investigative agents that was really recommended from our stakeholder discussion. So, you know, could we at least see, you know, was there other MUIs for this person when we're trying to do our historical review and look at that? And, and there will be the opportunity to see general information about MUIs. You won't be able to necessarily get all the detail, but have that information about where their previous MUIs. And certainly then there's opportunity for us to, to get more information on those MUIs for you if you would need that. But yeah, so there will be an opportunity to have a, a, a broader search outside just your county of some MUIs, which uh, people had asked for and we thought would be good. good okay, question. and Christina's asked, are there changes regarding the information able to be added uh, for intern or interim MUIs? Are there changes regarding the information able to be added for interim MUIs? Christina, you want to be just to look, give us a little more on that? I'm trying to make sure to understand, but you want to give us just a little more? Yeah, so um, I apologize. So when we're adding interim MUIs, um, typically you wouldn't add a category in the system now. You would put it in an interim report. So is there going to be a change of how that information is added? 
You know, I, I believe you're going to be able to add it and, and go back uh, and I'll have to double check. And Dustin, if you know, certainly let me know. I think that you can go through and, and put the inf all the information that you know. And if that report or that category needs to be added after that, you could be able to go back and add categories as you would need to. Um, is that your understanding, Dustin? I do think that's the understanding I have. Mm -hmm. So we'll you should be, be able, able to modify oh, and change things after the fact, edit what you need as you work through post wizard. So say you get through the wizard and you're at that final screen, you have the opportunity then to, to fix errors, change things or make updates. Um, and then obviously we'll help you through that as well from our side, whatever we need to do um, to get that straightened out. It looks like we got another question from Joan there about we'll be able to see information regarding uh, primary persons involved that had MUIs in other counties and there is ability to do a PPI search for investigative agents. So that information, again, it will be a general uh, search that would be able to happen to, to gather additional information there. So that's a good question as well. And uh, let's see, Valerie's asking, when will the new system be available? Um, the rollout date is not a specifically identified yet, but obviously we feel like we're getting close and we want to make sure we get you guys involved and in sharing information and have good good details. So it will be coming soon and we certainly will keep you posted um, as it as we're able to do that. We're in the process of uh, reviewing some bug fixes, working with the contractors, but we're getting very, very close. All right. Do we got any other questions? I'm I'm trying to keep up with the ch with the chat there, Dustin. Anything else coming in that you can see or anybody else sees, Heather? Anybody? I do not see any other questions, but great questions being asked. Valerie says she can't wait. I'm so excited. You know, Valerie, we are, we are so excited that you can't wait and we can't wait. But at the same time, we want to try to make sure we cover the bases and and have it as ready to go when when you get it as we can, knowing full well that you guys are so smart about the way you do systems that. You'll identify some things that we're going to need and and uh, you know we'll know we'll go back to and, and work on that the nice thing about this through salesforce is everybody that i talked to that uses salesforce um, has had like you know versioning so we start out with whatever our version is going to be 1.0 and then we go and we work with it and we find out what's working great and we find out what we need to add to it based on your guys feedback and you know then we'll work on version 2.0 like kind of like what we've done with previous its but some of the some of the stuff is just it's it's really exciting. It's going to make it easier. Uh, going to give you some good information, good resource. Um, we're we're tickled with it. Uh, but with all that said, I, I'm always cautious about it. With all that said, it's something new, and I know how change is for all of us, and probably worse for people that get older like me. Change <laughs> change is not the best. So trying to make sure that we we do it well, and and we got you guys the information um, that you need to do your job. That's that's what we want to try to make sure happens. And. I want to I want to send a special thanks to to Ted and Heather and all of our folks for being on here today and helping answer questions. Special thanks to you guys for being here with us. I hope it's just giving you a really intro look at what we got. We're excited about it. We're re ready for more feedback from you once we roll it out. Um, we have been able to have some internal testers, so internal uh, IAs, MUI contacts, providers, other stakeholders, and they've given us some some nice feedback. So. Uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, we've got the, the documents that are the training manuals that are going to be there, the trailer that Ted did, the demos that we've done. We're really trying to make sure we get you guys really good information so you're set and ready to go on the day we say, hey, we're going to try to do this thing live and, and knowing that we'll have questions and things that come up as, as well there. But just uh, really appreciate everybody's work. This has been a really long time coming and we're excited about it and, and looking forward to the future and what it might hold for the work that you're doing to protect folks. Um, that you work with every day. So appreciate everybody on the call. And just any any other final words or anything else anybody has before we wrap up? I think we got about four minutes left. There is a new hey. question that came through. Um, Janelle asked, where would we add an interim report? She does um, 30 post MUI updates and would like to know where to enter that. Oh, and it looks like Dustin was on it. Sorry, Dustin. Yeah, there you go. No worries. It's a good question. Uh, and just so everyone knows, it's in the comments section of that final report. Um, we're able to add in interim reports and make updates there. So that's where that will land now. And there'll be some more some more training coming um, when it talk to talk about reports. Um, there's going to be every an IA or MUI contact would have a reports button that they can utilize to gather information for um, the MUIs that they're able to see and, and to, to help slice and dice, as we mentioned, those 
those things. You guys do some incredible uh, analytics out there on, on MUIs, and it's going to give the ability to, for you to, to do that and, and I think do that even more smoothly. There are still going to be those statewide reports. I know that people will request and, and want, and we're working on those as well. So hopefully we'll get those things coming coming your way as well. Any other questions, thoughts, ideas we need to talk about before we wrap up for today? Okay. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. Enjoy your Friday. Beautiful, sunny Friday out there. And, and uh, don't worry, we are going to keep you posted. Have a great one, guys. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.